Uh, Black Power in 21st Century, I, I want to deal with organizations. Mm. National Urban League celebrating its 100th anniversary in 2010, the NAACP coming off its 100th anniversary. Uh, and what's always very interesting to me is that when uh, President Barack Obama was elected, you had all the people who were saying, well, I don't think we no longer need the NAACP. Oh. But I never heard anybody say if Hillary Clinton won, get rid of the National Organization of Women. women. Or when Joe <laughs> Lieben was running vice president, no need for the ADL. And so on this whole notion of black power, what is the place for black institutions Joe, I want to go right to you because you served on the NAACP Board of Directors. For 14 years. You also never hear Italian Americans say get rid of the hyphen, only when it comes to us. You never hear Spanish uh, or Italian or uh, French Americans say get rid of the hyphen. Black power is one of the most feared elements on the planet. They feared it in South Africa. They feared it prior to colonialization. They feared it prior to the civil rights movement. They feared it prior to the end of slavery. It has always culturally been something that has dominated the consciousness of, of European America. Because power understands what power means. I, I remember oh, reading that column abs abs Pat Buchanan wrote. It was like, well, you know, now the numbers are changing. I hope they're as good as to us and don't, don't, and, don't remember and, all the stuff that we did and, necessarily to and them. There's a, and there's a magnificent book that I think people, black or white, should read. And again, it's Dr. Frances Welsing's book, The ISIS Papers. Mm -hmm. She out Lines exactly what the whole issue of racism and power is all about as it relates to the planet. A little more complicated to get right. in than we have time for. But a lot of it is the fear of, and I'll say it because it doesn't get said on TV enough, uh, genetic survival. Hmm. I mean, power uh, tends to make people attractive. When you live on a planet in which 75% of the people are of people of color, right. you are concerned about how much power you really have. Ron and April, I mean, I, I, when I think back to the civil rights movement, I mean, that was the fear of the NAACP, of the Urban League, of uh, SNCC, mm -hmm. of the Black Panthers, of all these organizations, of the Nation of Islam, and that is uh, telling African Americans it's time for us to have black power. But today, your assessment of the organizations, the structure, uh, uh, are some say they're adrift or are they simply in transition in terms of operating in a different environment in the 21st century? Well, I think they're in transition. I, I think that obviously when you look at the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, uh, the civil rights organizations, the NAACP, had a very clear and a very defined role, which was true equality, making sure that students could integrate the classrooms, making sure that African Americans had the opportunity to achieve the American dream as an equal. I think today, well, there's been a lot of progress that's been made, and I think that uh, African Americans have significantly expanded in the middle class. I still believe that the one area that these organizations could work the most is in the area of education. I think our children, I think not only black children, white children, all children, but these specific organizations, when looking at Black Power Roland, we have a better obligation. We need to do a better job of equipping our children with the skills and the technology they need to compete.